Hello, my name is Barry and this is my workshop and today I'm going to explain to you how to make a weed rake uh, to do a lake survey with on, on your lake or in the river out in front of your property. There's a couple things you're going to need to be able to do that. You're going to need a ruler, a black marker permanent, some 100 mile an hour tape, a pair of scissors, a rope, maybe some wire ties and a rake end. Now the rake ends, I don't, Matt, I don't expect you to go out and purchase a rake and then cut the handle off. The best way to get these is yard, yard sales, garage sales, people break their rake handles. Uh, you can take and pick them up for 50 cents to a dollar. Depending on the depth of your lake, you might only need 25 foot of rope, 50 foot of rope, or 100 foot of rope. It doesn't have to be as heavy as this, it can be a lot thinner. This one's thinner than, than this one. This is one that I've already made. And you'll notice that this rake has two rake ends on it, one going in each direction. That's the preferred method. If you have one rake and you tie it up and you try to pull it through the water, if it lands this way up, you're, you may get some vegetation. If it lands this way up on the bottom of the lake, all it's going to do is move across the top of the weeds and you're not going to get anything. So this is why we do a double end rake. You can either weld them together or you can use zip ties to put them together. Preferred method is to weld it, but if you don't have a welder or a friend that can do it for you, you can use zip ties in the meantime. We have another rake here, it's a lot heavier. We thought maybe this would get uh, more into the weed the muck and get the weeds earlier. We found out it's too heavy and all we get is mud. So you can see that the tines on this are really heavy and they're kind of angled, but not very much. The ones on the other side have a better angle. And what we found out is if the rake lands this way and pulls, these rake tines do a pretty good job of picking up the weeds. This side doesn't. As soon as you start pulling it up out of the water, the weeds drop off and you lose them, so you don't even know if you got anything. So this was a trial and error. We set that aside and we haven't used it since we tested it. This is the one we use. It's lighter. You can see it's got curved ends on the rake, so it makes real good. Either way it lands, it's going to pull through and get the weeds. Once you built your rake end, then you get your rope and you tie it around it. And then you measure from the end of the rake up so that you can figure out how deep you got. So I marked mine starting at two foot and then every foot thereafter. And what you need to do is, I've marked it all the way up to six feet so far, seven feet, excuse me. So I'll measure another foot out. I'll mark the rope. Cut a piece of tape off. So I can double it over. tape, in this particular case on both sides, for eight feet. So when we bring it up, we know how deep it is. I'm going to do two more so I can measure out to ten feet of depth. Depending on the depth of your lake, you may not need to go more than 10 feet because most of your, your weeds are going to grow in the littoral area or the shallow areas of the lake. 
some lakes, if they're very murky, the weeds will only grow in about one to six foot of water. If you've got a very clear lake, the weeds are going to grow at a, a, a lot deeper in the lake. And the reason for that is the sun, the light, warms up the water and the light reaching down to the bottom of the lake helps the plants grow. So depending on the clarity of your water, you may need to mark your rope for deeper survey. You may ask, well, why am I checking the depth of the, the lake while I'm trying to rake for weeds? Well, the reason is when you do a lake survey, besides determining what kind of weeds you have and how dense the population of weeds is, you also want to know how deep the water is where the weeds are growing. You'll find that as you move out from your shoreline, You'll start seeing weeds sooner in the shallower areas, and then you'll see fewer weeds the deeper you go, depending again on the clarity of your water. At the lake that I'm working at, we get weeds out to about six to eight feet. Beyond that, there's not many weeds at all. So you need to know where your weeds are growing, how deep the water is where they're growing, because if you ever hire a contractor to do any type of chemical application or weed harvesting, they're going to need to know that in order to figure out their chemical concentrations. So now we have our weed rake assembled. You'll need a bucket. Put everything in. take it out to the lake. In a follow-up video, I'll show you exactly how to do a weed survey from a boat in a lake. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. Have a nice day.